I'm sorry I was so late last night. The meeting took forever. These finances are a nightmare. Thanks. So what happened? Well, they argued about the price, but in the end, I uh, decided to convert my share options. It took me till about three to tie it up. You did it? Well, there's a few loose ends, but... Uh, but the merger's done. Oh, that's wonderful. Tonight, we celebrate. Oh, what about now? Mm, I'd love to. But I gotta work. How'd you sleep? Oh, not very well. Why don't you see a doctor, huh? Well, I don't see what good it would do. Look, they're only dreams. I'll be fine. Should go for a swim. Mm. Relax you. Martin, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I haven't been very good company no, lately. No, it's okay. Look, I just wish I could do more. I've been so busy with this takeover. If I knew what the dreams meant, then maybe I could do something about them. Well, what about going back to the property? No, no. I don't think it would do much good. My auntie sent me to boarding school when I was seven. I really don't remember much about the country. It might help. You might remember something. Look, if you want to go back, I'll support you, OK? <laughs> mm. I'll see you tonight. OK. Madeline, I'm so pleased to see you. Hello, Miles. We don't seem to see very much of you these days. What can I do for you? I'd like an advance on my allowance. May I inquire the reason why? No. The board will ask me. Why don't you tell them that it's my money and I'd like to spend it? Now, you know I can't do that. They will need a reason. Your aunts will clearly state the rate for increase. They've already had this year's. Now, if you and Martin have been living above your income, Miles, you sound just like she used to. Really, I don't know why I bothered. Oh, now, Madeline, wait, please. Don't be like that. Martin would be very angry if he knew that I was here. You know how he feels about his independence. And I know how you feel about him. There's no need to hide it. Madeline, I've never said anything bad against Martin. No, but you've implied it. You don't like him because he left the firm, and he doesn't mind taking a risk. I've never been in favour of corporate takeovers liquidating companies that are down on their luck, but he has been successful and I don't hold that against him. Good. Then you'll approve the money. You see, it's for a little present. He's just secured another takeover. Ah! Company cannibalism. All right, we'll make it an advance. Just have them forward the bill to me. Thanks, Miles. You're a darling.
don't do that. Another dream? Yes. About Thomas? Look, I'm scared. It, the dreams, if it's like before, I... Nothing will happen, Madeline. Look, you were six years old when your parents died. You only broke down before because you had no one to talk to. It's not like that now. I'm remembering things. Good. Now, what's worse, facing your fears or being tormented by them? I don't know. Look, could you take tomorrow off? No. No, not at the moment. Why don't you quit? I could support us both. Look, look I, I, I don't want to be supported, Madeline. Now, why don't you take a sleeping pill? Uh, just get some sleep. Hmm? You know I don't like those things. They might help settle your nerves. They're not the solution. Then tell me what is. Oh, Jesus, Martin, if I knew that, you think I would be standing here in the middle of the night with all the lights on? Martin! Shit. Now go to bed. Madeline, I told you to go to bed. I want to wait for them. It's your fault that they're late. Now go to bed. Bed. Martin, I'm sorry. Madeline, you know I love you, but these mood swings. Now, either we work together on this, or you get some help. I'll try, but I don't think it'll do any good. You agreed to cooperate, remember? Just say what comes into your head. <laughs> I hated my last doctor. Oh, lucky I'm not a doctor then. So. What's your first childhood memory? Getting into trouble. No supper until you tell the truth. I didn't do it. Let me out now. Don't lock me in. Let me out now. Why did you start with a bad memory? You could have picked a good one. Well, I only asked the question. You, you chose the memory. Well, ask another one. Okay, your parents. Did you love them? What sort of a question is that? Of but course I love them. Why are you angry at me? I'm not angry. Look, this isn't going to work. You always argue. I don't. You do. You are so defensive. Martin, you are playing with my mind. Of course I'm defensive. Well, let's just forget it. It was a stupid idea. No, no, look, it's not. It's not a stupid idea. It's me. I've just blocked out so much of what happened to me as a child. And the dreams are bringing it all back. I, I feel like I'm losing control. Uh, that... It's okay. Thomas wants something for Thomas me. is dead, Madeline. It's just a dream. Just hold me. The subconscious emotions can manifest themselves as a dream. The unconscious state of sleep allows the subconscious to come forward to the semi-conscious mind. This semi-conscious state is what we call a dream. Frequent images found are dark tunnels, the ending is unknown. Trains and train tracks cross our paths. All signify the journey being made. Loved ones appear out of nowhere context often confused and misplaced. The journey is distorted. Climbing stairs and staircases move us towards our goal as our mind attempts to unravel our fears. Reoccurring images amplify the need for a resolve. Moving upward is a longing for a future event. Never reaching the top is the expression of frustration and the desire to change. 
unable to do so. What do you think? Well, fine if you're writing a thesis, but uh, you're meant to be talking about yourself, your experiences and how you feel. Well, I'm working up to it. Madeline, the whole point of the process is for you to decide what the dreams mean to you. Yes, and that will come. Then let's start again. What's your first memory? Why are you pushing me? No one's pushing you. Don't be so paranoid. I'm not paranoid. You're pushing me. It was a simple question. What are you afraid of? What did you do, Madeline? Stop pushing me! <laughs> Blood pressure's a little high, but it's nothing to worry about. Oh, it's the dreams. She's scared she'll have another breakdown. Has she seen a psychiatrist? No, oh, she doesn't trust them. I'll try to talk her into it. For her own safety, she should see someone. Call me if you need me. I pray the Lord, my soul to keep. God bless Mummy, Daddy, and Thomas. Now, climb into bed. Do you think God heard me? Of course he did. How do you know? Because God always listens to good little girls. Now go to sleep. No, don't turn it off! I leave it on! Leave it on! What was she like? she like? Well, she was old-fashioned and tough. She was very proper. She was engaged to a man, but he was killed in the war, so she never married. She probably died a virgin. It's funny you hardly mention her. There isn't very much to mention. She didn't like me very she only looked after me out of a sense of duty to my mother. She blamed me for the accident. How did that happen? Well, I was too young to remember all the details, but... A logging truck hit the car and... Mum, Dad and Thomas were killed. I think she would have been happier if I'd died as well. She said it was my fault. Why? Martin, I'm, I'm tired. Do we have to continue this? Not if you don't want to.
Are we still going to the property tomorrow? Do you want to? Yeah, I do, but I'm scared. It's Thomas. In the dreams, he's not the same. I mean, he's not nice anymore. He's after me, and, and he, he blames me for the accident. Sleep. Hurry up, we should have left earlier. We'll take hours to drive to your aunt's house. Oh, calm down, I'm coming. You want some? No, thanks. Why did you wear that shirt? What's wrong with it? Nothing. Come on, you're going to say something about... Really? It's fine, it's just... Why? It's just very, um... country. Oh, it must have been wonderful growing up in the country. After the accident, I was all alone. I hated the mansion. It was so big, empty and cold. Do you really think this will help, going back and retracing the past? Such a beautiful spot. I used to come here when I was about four or five for swimming. My aunt brought me here a couple of times after the accident. It all seems so long ago. Now we can turn around, you know. No. No, you were right. I need to work through this. I feel responsible. You can't blame yourself. Why not? She did. You were a child, Madeline. It was an accident. You were lucky you survived. I wasn't in the car. They left me behind. Then how can it be your fault? That's what I need to find out. She blamed me, and Thomas does. Our doctor thinks I'm dangerous. Do you? He just thinks you should talk to a professional. Why? So that I can tell them I'm 29 years old and I'm afraid of the dark? That I feel responsible for my parents and my, my brother's is, death? It has been getting worse. No. It's getting better. It's clearer. It's Thomas, you see. He's the dangerous one. It's okay. I just, I just want to know what happened. Just, I don't know, ask me some questions. Okay. <laughs> what do you remember about this place? A rope? Mm -hmm. Um, a, a rope swing. <laughs> I used to put Thomas on it and push him out over the water. God, he'd scream, but he really loved it. <laughs> He'd be 27 next July. He was four when he died. Oh. We had such lovely picnics here. We used to play. Come on, I'll race you. Where to? To the other side, of course. I'm telling you, I if saw a man. He a man there. He is gone now. Come on.
Shut up! You'll scare away the customers. Leave my dog alone. Don't worry about her. She's deaf. What can I do you for? Uh, fill her up, thanks. You want anything? No, no thanks. I'm fine. How far is it to Oberon? About 20, 30 minutes. 40. About 35 minutes. You up from the city? Yeah. You should go and have a look at the falls. Yeah? Had a lot of rain last few days. Falls should be good. Makes a damn good sight. How am I do that? What happened? Nothing. Madeline. Nothing. I'm fine. Either you tell me what's going on or I stop the car. Martin, please. All right? Tell me what happened. I'm not crazy, Martin. Just tell me I'm not crazy. What happened? I was sitting in the car. I looked down and he's come back. Who? Thomas. He waved at me. Jesus, we should never have started this. Martin, I saw him. I can't explain it, but I saw him. You have to believe me. I think we should turn around and go back home. We can't, not now. Of course we can. You can, I can't. I have to find out what he wants. I want to find the car wreck. Oh, for God's sake, Madeline. This is getting morbid. It's like a jigsaw puzzle, OK? I have some of the pieces, and if I find the wreck, I might find another piece. Well, how do you know it's still there? Now, they would have towed it away. I don't. But Thomas is here. Madeline. You said you'd help. Where'd you see it? Just over here. This has to be the place. I mean, the road, the corner, but there was a house. Well, there's a house behind the trees. Then this is it. Out of the way. No, it cost too much to salvage a wreck. After 20 years, anything could have happened. What's that? No, it's just some rusty iron. Could be a car. No, it's sheet metal. It's from a roof or a fence or something. There, what's that? Station wagon. It must be here. It could be anywhere. It has to be here somewhere. Well, maybe you're not meant to find Look, it. Look, it's here. I can feel it. This is getting us nowhere. Me, Thomas, please. 
Madeline, there is nothing here. Better? We should try to get to the property by six. I don't think you're in a hurry. No, I'm not. I was just thinking about the light. I'll be fine. Oh, did you come here as a kid? Yeah, shh. Listen. Come on, let's go. Do you know where you're going? Yes, it's just down here. What's the matter? Race here to the falls. He's following me. He was here, by the road, in the picnic area. No one is following you, Madeline. 
I saw him. I did. Adeline, Thomas is dead. He died more than 20 years ago. Then who did I see? No one. He hates me. For Christ's sake, let's not start this again. He's after me because I killed him. Madeline, take a look around very slowly and tell me what you see. Trees and you. See? It's the ghosts. It's the fox that upset you. It's not your fault. I'm responsible. You think I'm crazy, don't you? I think you do need help. Well, you could have me committed. This isn't a joking matter, Madeline. Sorry. I'll try to behave. Further. We're close, we're very close. Martin, we didn't come this way. Sit down here. Well, we should have stayed on the road. Martin, where are you? Straight ahead. Come on. Martin? Where? Martin, there's no time to play games. We need a four-wheel drive to pull us out. I'll try the phone, all right? Oh, the reception's no good. Must be the valley. He's coming to get me. Oh, there was a house at the turn-off. I'll run back there. Don't leave me. Madeline, I have to. I'll call for help and get a tow truck. I'll come too. Darling, you are in no condition to come with me. I can run faster without you. Look, I promise I'll be back within the hour. You'll be fine. Keep away from me, Thomas. G'day. Can't you read the signs? No trespassers. No, I didn't see them. 
What, are you blind as well as stupid? Look, I just need some help, all right? You shut the gate? Yeah. Then what do you want? A tow. My car's stuck in the forest. You alone? My wife's still there. You're listening to the Country Hour. And here is the stock and grain report at the close of trading. Keith 
Evans. I own the farm this side. I was just uh, checking the traps and I heard your horn. My husband's gone to get a tow truck. Yeah, I know. I was just with him. I can pull you out if you like. Um, do you think he'll be long? On a night like this, who can tell? Most of the tow trucks are on the main highway. I'll get my truck. Last time I saw your husband, he was uh, heading toward Harris's to call for a tow truck. It's by the turn off to the main road. You know how to get there? The same way we came in? No, 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 no. You get stuck again. You take the first turn to the left at the bottom of the rise. The main road's about uh, five minutes. Your husband here uh, offered me money. I'm sorry. Thanks. That's enough. But on a cold night like this, I'd uh, rather have a kiss. You know what I mean? What do you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> What do you want? I didn't think anyone had heard me. I heard you. I'm looking for my husband. What would he be doing here? Our car got bogged in the pine forest just... I know where it is. He was coming up here looking for help. I haven't seen anyone. Wait a minute. 
You might as well come inside and wait for him. He won't find anything once that fog sets in. If he was making for here, you should stay. No sense in you both getting lost. Wait for him here. Uh, I wasn't expecting visitors. Oh, it's all right. Why was she making for here instead of the ranger's lookout? But we didn't know there was a lookout. He was going to get help to use a farm. <laughs> no point. I don't have one. Are there any other farms between here and the forest? No. Evan's farm's on the other side. And his house is at the bottom of the valley. He's the man that towed me out. Lucky you. What was he doing in the forest? Hunting, same as you. I wasn't in the forest. But I saw you. This morning by the river. Not me. It's a nature reserve. It's illegal to hunt there. You got the wrong man. I've never seen you before in my life. But I saw you. I said you're wrong! You were right. Yes, um... I'm sorry. Um, could I have a glass of water, please? Shaking. It's these um, wet clothes, I'm cold. I'll get your towel. No, it's all right, really. No trouble. I lit a fire in the living room. You can warm yourself in there. Thank you. Want coffee? Yes, thank you. White, no sugar. how cold I was. Do you think my husband could have already been here? Not likely. I would have heard him. Well, what do you think has happened? Any number of things. Could be lost. Could have walked right past. Could have got a lift into the village. I'll have a look for him if you like. Would you? As soon as the weather clears up. 
Give me a jacket. I'll draw it off. Your hands are like ice. Where'd you park? On the main road. Give me your keys. Why? You can't park by the road. A truck could come around the corner in the fog. I pulled over to the side. It doesn't matter. It's a blind corner. Some of those logging rigs take up more than half the road. I've seen it happen. It's bloody dangerous. I'll move it then. No. It's easier if I do it. You'd never find the driveway in the fog. All right. There's some more towels in the bathroom. You should get under a hot shower. Got some dry clothes if you want. Uh, my bag's in the car. I'll fetch it for you.
What do you want? I brought your suitcase. Just leave it by the door. Sure. I'll, uh... I'll fix some food. You want some coffee, Madeline? How did you know my name? You were on your bed. Well? Uh, what? You want more coffee? Uh, yes, um... It's a nice car you got. Must have cost a bit. Uh, no, not really. Why didn't you use your phone? What do you mean? Your mobile in your car. Uh, well, it's the area. Um, it's bad for reception. What do you do for a living? I thought you were going to look for my husband. I will. When the time's right. And when will that be? Later. Whenever it clears up a bit. I've got some lamb I can heat up. Like lamb. Martin! Martin! Where are you? Madeline! Use a bit of sense and get back inside. Have it your way then. You can freeze to death for all I care. Worried. Thought I might have to call a doctor. Easy. You've had a nasty fall and you stepped in a fox trap. Lucky you're wearing boots. How long have I been lying here? About half an hour. Where are my clothes? They were wet. You were shivering, so I changed them. How dare you? What do you want with me? Nothing. What have you done with him? Who? My husband. Is that what you ran outside for? I haven't done anything to him. I found the shirt. What shirt? In the bathroom. It's his shirt. It has blood on it. Now, what did you do to him? I don't know what you're talking about. How did you know my name? It was on your bag. There's no tag on my bag. I checked the bag. It didn't have a name tag. What about this one? Did you check this one? 
Do you believe me now? It doesn't explain the shirt. It's my shirt. I cut myself and the shirt hasn't been washed, all right? Fix you something to eat. What do you say? Suit yourself. Driving to? Oberon. Visiting family? Yes. And they'll be worried. They'll call the police, come looking for me. My family's like that. I'm always on time, you see, they worry about me. I don't know any cars in Oberon. That is your last name, isn't it? Car. My family name is Manning. So. Nobody will be looking for you after all, will they? Of course they will. Tell the truth. There aren't any Mannings left in Oberon. How do you know? Because your aunt was buried five years ago. You don't remember me, do you? My family used to work for your aunt. In just as much trouble as she was. Stuck up old. It's a beauty, isn't it? My dad used to collect them. Hold it up. Feel the weight. Don't worry. It's not loaded. Can't take any chances, can we? Why are you doing this to me? I'm not doing anything. Now eat your food. I'm not hungry. Suit yourself. Manning in my house, my father had turned in his grave. Your aunt never helped anyone. Crippled my father, worked him into the ground. Perhaps I should drive to another house. Call the petrol station, find my husband and tell him everything's all right. But everything's not all right, is it? You just want to call the police and turn me in. If you're innocent, you don't have anything to fear from the police. The poor can't afford to be innocent. No matter what I say, you don't believe me. I know your type, you've already made up your mind, you made your judgment. I don't believe you because you're not telling me the whole truth. I did see you this morning hunting by the river. I didn't imagine it. Now, something has happened to Martin, hasn't it? Possible. If you're innocent, then prove it. Help me! I already have. I invite you into my house with food and shelter. Well, just let me go! I can't! Where are my car keys?
feet away from me, you bastard. I told you I found him. He's been here all the time. Sure he has. Uh, Matty, you're in danger. Stop calling me that. Oh, you never wanted to look for him. You just stayed out there in the dark, didn't you? No. You never wanted to help me. Everything you have said to me has been a lie. I spoke to Evan. He said he gave your husband a lift here after you pulled your car out. No more lies. <laughs> You've kept me captive. You wrecked my car. Now what have you done to him? I haven't done anything. Wrong answer. <laughs> what are you doing? Why did you turn the lights off? Leave me alone. Do you remember the little girl scared of the dark? You think I'm scared of you? The generator's on a timer. The switch is up at 11. <gasps> nice try, but it's 20 minutes too early. <laughs> I told you he's here. He's cut the power. Sure. And he put blood on his shirt too? It's my shirt. I cut myself. Tell the truth. Do you hear me? I don't believe you. What were you doing by the river? I was hunting. It's a game reserve and I didn't want to get caught. That's better. Now this is your last chance, the truth. What have you done with Martin? Nothing. Martin?
your fault, you stupid little girl. family died in a car crash on the way back from the hospital. You didn't cause their death. But, Sergeant, the dreams. The forensic report showed traces of dithylamide in the water he'd been drinking. It's a hallucinogenic. Martin had been drugging you. That's why the dreams started and you saw Thomas. The drug enlarged your fear of the dark, as well as your sense of guilt over your brother's death. You don't understand. Martin loved me. Madeline. Martin was desperate. He needed your inheritance money. He gambled everything he had on that takeover bid. And having worked for your aunt's trust, he knew that if you died, the money would go to charity. His only hope was to have you committed, take your power of attorney and get control over the money. So, Harris didn't do... No, a thing. He was scared you were going to expose him for poaching on a nature reserve. It was the blood on the shirt that sparked your childhood memories. And it helped Martin make it seem as though Harris had killed him. He'd set it all up. The destroyed car, the house lights. He just waited outside. He didn't need to hurt you.